Good morning, welcome to our daily psalm. Uh, today we're reading through Psalm 138, Psalm 138. Psalm 138 is the first of a group of eight psalms of David. Uh, actually, these are the final eight from him in the Psalter. And Psalm 138 divides into three sections, all of which, if we were using the language of uh, mathematical notation, would have that in their title, that little V sign on its side, uh, meaning that one side of the equation is greater than the other. So in verses 1 to 3, um, Yahweh is greater than the gods, small g. And verses 4 to 6, Yahweh is greater than all kings. And in the final two verses, 7 and 8, Yahweh is greater than enemies. So this is a psalm of, uh, of joyful confidence from David that our incomparable God is simply greater. Is Psalm 138 verse 1. I will praise, actually a, a better word for praise, it's really about confess, it's a confession. I will confess you, O Lord, with my whole heart. And you'll have read this several times now if you've been following through the daily psalms about the way that uh, David brings the whole of himself into his confession of God, his worship and praise and glorifying, magnifying of God. I always find that quite a challenge uh, to bring everything of me before God. So much of uh, my confession is a sense half-hearted, while David goes for the whole heart, wholeheartedness. I will confess you, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods will I sing praise to you. It's odd, isn't it, to think of uh, David singing before other gods. But um, the Psalms simply assume the existence of other divine heavenly beings, but also that they are absolutely nothing in comparison to Yahweh, and certainly to be kept in their proper place as David does here, by deliberately glorifying God in front of them all. God is greater. Verse 2, I will bow down towards your holy temple and praise your name because of your love and faithfulness. These are the things that generate our praise, aren't they? We don't just praise God because he's God. We praise him because we know he has a certain character that is full of love and faithfulness. This is a gracious God. Second half of verse 2, for you have magnified your name and your word above all things. You have magnified your name. The name, in the, of course, in the Old Testament revealed by God is personal name Yahweh. And uh, our simplest way of understanding that is simply it means I am. I exist. I'm here. I'm present always, never a moment when I'm not. You have magnified your name and your word. This is God who is the promise deliverer. He says things, he makes promises and he keeps them. He's always true to his word. So we join with David, um, magnifying God's name and word. Verse 3, in the day that I called to you, you answered me. You put new strength in my soul. In the day that I called to you, well, that day isn't specified, um, but it's obviously a day when David needed to cry out to God, or a period of his life when he cried out to God, and we know there were many of those. And here's the God whose word is trustworthy. You answered me. You put new strength in my soul. That phrase suggests that God put a kind of boldness, almost a defiance into David. So often when we're facing difficult circumstances, we pray, <clears throat> God, either get me out of here or change my circumstances, change what I'm facing. But David's testimony here is that God changes him uh, rather than his circumstances. You put a defiance of strength within me to face what I needed to face. So God is greater than all the gods in the heavenly realms. He's also greater than all the kings of the earth, which is what the next section, verses 4 to 6, is all about. 
Verse 4, all the kings of the earth shall praise, shall confess you, O Lord, for they have heard the words of your mouth. The, the tense of that, um, that last phrase, they've heard, expresses a certainty. This is some, something that has happened. Um, and uh, okay, this, in a sense, has got a sense of prophecy about it. Um, David expresses that certainty that every tongue will confess uh, the supremacy of Yahweh, the one true God. It's as good as done because God is so great. Verse 5, they shall sing, the kings of the earth shall sing of the ways of the Lord, not their own power and authority and wisdom and strength, but his. That great is the glory of the Lord. It will be on the lips of every single person. The kings, in a sense, represent the whole of their nations. Verse 6, though the Lord, this is a lovely verse, so easy to us to think of supremacy going with power that sits over and above. Not so with Yahweh. Verse 6, though the Lord be high, he watches over the lowly. As for the proud, he regards them from afar. So God's glory is shown not so much in terms of power as in his care for those who are struggling with life. And he holds those who regard themselves as high and mighty somewhat at arm's length. And isn't that the way that we see God revealed in Jesus? From his birth, lowly birth, onwards. It's exactly how he behaved. He watches over the lowly. He associates himself with them. And as for the proud, he keeps them at arm's length. And then on to the final section, the last two verses. And for all the, the grand vision and the elsewhere-ness, if you like, of the first six verses, David himself actually at this moment in time is, well his times are still tough. Uh, he's hard pressed. Verse 3 referred to God giving uh, David some inner resilience to face what he needed to face. And now David turns to his God who is, he knows, greater than the enemies that threaten his life and press in on him. Verse 7. There's almost an echo of verse 23 here, isn't it? Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Verse 7. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you will give me life. The word can also mean revive me. You will revive me, even if it gets on top of me. You will stretch forth your hand against the fury of my enemies. Your right hand will save me. David has known time and time again, God the Deliverer. And of course we rejoice in the greatest deliverance of all, of God's saving hand through Jesus for us. Verse 8, the Lord shall make good his purpose for me. Almost his word to me, his promise to me, the covenant, he will make good on that. Your loving kindness, O Lord, is almost your name, it revealed who you are. Your loving kindness, O Lord, endures forever. And then the last little line gets slipped in almost. Forsake not the work of your hands. A little plea at the end there. O Lord, I know you are great. I've said so all the way through this hymn. Greater than the gods, than every king, than my enemies. But right now I still have troubles, O Lord. So please carry on being well, not just great, but greater than, greater than my circumstances. Let's take a moment to pray. I will confess you, O Lord, with my whole heart. Your loving kindness, O Lord, endures forever. O Lord our God, you are supreme over all things. We bless you for your care for those who struggle and ask you to look upon the humble and the lowly and put new strength into our souls to complete your purpose in us and for us 
and for you, in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.